Hey guys, what's happening? So now we're getting back into Peter David's 2023 Joe Fixit series. And for this one, not only do we get one of the rare events where Joe Fixit loses his cool, but also we come to find out that the party at the Coliseum Casino has got a few extra people heading that way. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so in our last talk, we had seen the first conversation between Bruce and Joe Fixit, which for the most part was Bruce addressing Joe as the Hulk and telling him that this life that he'd made for himself out here in Vegas was just ridiculous. But like we'd seen for Bruce, talking reckless, even in his own mind, has consequences. And eventually Joe gave Bruce control once again, but he did this in mid jump while leaving Bruce about a thousand feet in the air, falling to what presumably would be his death, or so we're told. And I gotta admit, with seeing Peter David do this, it takes me back. And it reminds me of the 1990 movie, Death of the Incredible Hulk, when at the time, the Hulk died after falling from an exploding helicopter. And I remember being a kid seeing this and being like, nah, man, ain't no way, ain't no way. Because at the time I was like, you mean to tell me that the Hulk who can jump from one state to the next, if by any chance that he doesn't land on his feet, then he's gonna die. Like, where's the logic? What, does he have an Achilles back? Help me understand this. To this day, I'm still trying to figure it out. But nonetheless, to get back on track here, Peter David is telling this story now, with it looking back on some of his work from the 80s and telling this story almost as if it had taken place back then. So in this scenario with Bruce falling, he's in danger of falling to his death. But just before we see how this pans out, it's here where we then jump over to the Coliseum Casino, where at this point, Wilson Fisk has effectively forced Michael Berenguetti out and taken over his casino. And I mean, allegedly, because there's no legal documentation at the moment and it's not in writing. So Fisk is still trying to figure that part out. But at this point in time, he's called a meeting with the other casino owners in the Vegas area to let them know as of this day going forward, they would all have to pay a protection fee. And initially they're all kind of like, from who? Because prior to Wilson Fisk coming here, all of these other casinos were doing just fine. So really quickly, they all understand that whatever trouble this is that the Kingpin is talking about, it's trouble that he's bringing here. Even though in this conversation and in this moment, the Kingpin's more or less like, oh, all well, that's fake news. But then out of nowhere while they're talking here, they hear a huge thoom just outside that sound like somebody just dropped a two-ton anvil right in front of the casino. And as we head over there to check it out, we find that Spider-Man has already made his way there, with him thinking that somebody had dropped a bomb out here. And it very much looks like that's the case. But just moments later, out of the smoke and the steam, a huge gray hand reaches out of this crater. And it's here where we find that Banner had given control back to Joe Fixit so that Joe could handle the impact of the landing. And really it's here where we find out that for Joe Fixit, with him jumping in the air and leaving Banner to fall, knowing that Bruce would have to change back, this was Joe's way of telling Bruce to shut up, stay inside, and stay out of Joe's way which once again lines up so well with Incredible Hulk issue 347, where we had seen Joe go through a very similar struggle, cause back then he knew if Bruce came back at the wrong time while Joe was handling some business, then Bruce could very much get them killed. But also we see this conflict carry over when Peter jumps down to check on Joe and make sure that they're good. Because when he does, Joe is still in a rage from going back and forth with Bruce. And to make it worse, when Peter then calls Joe Bruce, with him saying Bruce snap out of it, and that fuels the flame again. And it doesn't stop there because you then have Banner calling Joe Hulk as if he's the Savage Hulk. And at this point, Joe is just like, what are these people not getting? But then it's here where Bruce makes the point that at the end of the day, they are the same person, regardless of their identities being disassociated. And Bruce lets Joe know that you can change your name, you can make up a new one, it doesn't matter. And Bruce goes on to tell Joe that he thinks that Bruce is denying that he's a part of him. But when it comes to denial, Bruce says that he has nothing on Joe. But then right away, Joe tells Bruce to get out of his head. And Bruce is like, what? What are you gonna do? Smash yourself? And right away, I'm like, whoa, whoa, no, don't do that. But as this is going on, it's here where we find the Rhino charging into the Coliseum Casino. But as he makes his way in, he's quickly shocked by an old friend who is checking to see if the Rhino's armor was insulated, which it isn't. But soon after, it's here where we find that this was done by Electro. And as he tells Rhino that he didn't wear his regular getup because he knew if he put that on, then Spider-Man would be here right away to where then Rhino's like, well, Spider-Man is nowhere near here. But this lets us know that these guys got quite a bit to catch up on as far as who's all here in Vegas because both Spider-Man and the Hulk 
oh, I mean Joe Fixit, are both very much here. And speaking of the two, when we jump back over to them, Joe is shouting at the top of his lungs for Bruce to shut up, while Spider-Man, who's at point blank range, he compares the experience to going up against Black Bolt, which is probably a bit of an exaggeration, but hulked out lungs, it's a thing. And with Peter getting caught off guard here, this gives Joe the upper hand. And for a moment, Peter thinks that this is it for him. But for us, we know what's really going on with Joe. And not just here with Peter, but also inside of Joe's head between him and Banner. So it's not really that far-fetched to understand the fear that Peter has, since he's not a mind reader and he can't hear all the details. So the only thing Peter's thinking in this moment is that he's going to get his head popped. But then it's here where we also find that Count Nefaria and his crew, who prior to this point, they've individually been stopped by Joe Fixit in the past in their attempts to take over other casinos. And now that news is out that Wilson Fisk has recruited Joe Fixit to lead a team of villains, this has caused Count Nefaria to call up Mass Marauder, Hydro Man, and Whiplash in order to assemble a team that can go up against Joe Fixit's team. And with how this is done, we're told that they're being funded by the Magia Mafia with them believing that this team is their last hope of not getting forced out of town. But from here we then go back to Wilson Fisk, who's introducing his protection squad, who just happen to look a lot like the two people that these casino owners are paying to be protected from. Small world. But check this out, because when Wilson Fisk shows these guys, Rhino and Electro, and he tells the casino owners to sign a contract, which would bind them to pay for these protection services, right away one of these guys is like, hey, this is blackmail. And everybody else is looking at the contract like, I ain't finna sign this. But then when Joe Fixit walks in with Spider-Man on his shoulder, and all of a sudden, every one of these casino owners starts signing on the dotted line. And with seeing this, the funny thing to me is that seeing Rhino or Electro, that didn't do it. But when these guys saw Joe Fixit enter the room with Spider-Man on his shoulder, telling Kingpin, I got something for you, boss. And right away, that did it. <laughs> it's like Electro and Rhino didn't have these guys worried the slightest bit. But at this point, with Joe Fixit dropping off Spider-Man to the Kingpin, it's here where the Kingpin then tells Electro to unmask Spider-Man. And Electro does this right away, but when he pulls off Spider-Man's mask, Peter's face is painted in the same way that his mask looks. And with him doing this, it's a clever move, but it's a little more creepy than clever. But the creepiness was kind of clutch, because it caused Peter to catch Electro off guard. Because come to find out, this whole thing had been staged by Spider-Man, Joe Fixit, and Michael Berenghetti. With Peter going over to Charleston Boulevard in his regular clothes and getting his face painted like Spider-Man by some lady named Natalie, who just assumed that he was a cosplayer. But at this point, with the Kingpin seeing Joe here, he tells Joe to do something. And Joe's just like, okay, sure. To where then he just takes Mr. Berenghetti's coat. But at this point now, Mr. Berenghetti is letting Kingpin know that the gig is up. So right away, he tells the Kingpin to get out from behind his desk. And initially, Rhino's ready to fight because he knows Wilson Fisk isn't just going to back down. But right away, Fisk tells Rhino to hold off to where then he comes from around the desk and he approaches Joe. And as it stands, the Kingpin knows that his mind control has worn off. So as he approaches Joe, he gives him another dose of the pink powder to re-up on the mind control. To where then, the Kingpin once again tells Joe Fixit to kill Mr. Berenghetti only to quickly find out that this time it didn't work. As Joe Fixit grabs poor Wilson's arm and gives him the signature one hand body slam. But with this happening, I can only imagine the other casino owners who Wilson Fisk was trying to strong arm, they're now watching him get strong armed and they're like, where that protection at you was talking about? Cause if anybody need it right now, it's you. But of course, with Wilson Fisk catching this beat down once again, he's just like, how could this be? Why didn't the mind control work? And it's here where Spider-Man tells him that Joe's using nose filters that were provided by the same guy who made the powder. But when Spider-Man says this, like, I know heroes and villains, they like to, to brag about when they one up somebody and tell them how they did it. But I can't help but to think, now that the Kingpin knows who helped, he about to send the goons to pay that man a visit. So thanks, Spider-Man. But in the middle of Kingpin just getting worked, he calls Rhino because the Kingpin needs help. So then right away, the Rhino then comes in charging, nearly hitting the Kingpin in the process. But Rhino hits Joe straight through the wall and onto the casino floor. And it has the guests just looking like, damn son, where'd you find this? Because out of nowhere, Joe and Rhino just come crashing through the wall and throwing hands at one another like they didn't just come crashing through a wall. But also right here, I want to point something out because Rhino, he's like, Hulk, you're not fooling anybody. I know that's you. And it's like, man, the Rhino figured this out quicker than anybody. World's greatest detective, at least in the Marvel Universe. But on the other hand, with Electro, Spider-Man's able to take care of him rather quickly. And he does this by just asking for a lighter and cutting on the sprinklers. <laughs> Who knew? 
but back over with Joe Fix It and the Rhino going at it, and out of nowhere, Kingpin steps in and he catches a sneak hit on Joe Fix It. And all of a sudden, he's talking tough, saying how Joe caught him off guard last time, when clearly we know that that's Cap, like Mitch Liness. And the only reason that the Kingpin has the upper hand in this moment is because Joe was already fighting Rhino. But this is then interrupted when Count Nefaria steps in with his crew and he more or less tells the Kingpin that he doesn't care how strong he is or who he can throw hands with because he about to air the Coliseum out. And so now real quick, I wanna give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. that'll do it for this one guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one all right later